We're going to take a look at altitudes and orthocenters. First, go over, an, over what an altitude is. An altitude is a line which starts at a vertex of a triangle, comes straight across the center of the triangle, and hits the opposite line, or line segment, in, in this case it's BC, at 90 degrees. Now, each triangle has three of these, kind of like the medians of a triangle. This one would come across like such, hit at 90, and this one as well, and hit at 90. Now the point at which they all intersect is called the orthocenter. And uh, now I'm going to go into how this is used. And how I'm going to do that is get rid of one of these to show you. Now in a problem, we probably give you a triangle like this. And I'm going to put it <clears throat> in a coordinate plane so we can see what we're doing here and put it in context of how it's going to be on a, on a quiz or test. And this is your x-axis and your y-axis. I'm going to give each one of these, and this is the origin here, so 0, 0 is that B. We'll make this one 0, 6. Oh, I apologize. Say 0. And this one is going to be 3, 5. <clears throat> now what we need to do, the question is going to be stated something like, here's three points, which you're going to have to graph them, and where is the ortho center for this particular triangle? Now in order to find the ortho center, we need, this is a must, we must need two equations for the altitudes. So we need equations of the line in the following form, y equals mx plus b, which is slope-intercept form. So we need two equations of the line. So I need a line, we need an equation for this one and this one. This is the one we've picked. Now this one for, through A is much easier. It's just a vertical line. And anytime you have a vertical line, the equation is x because this is how I memorize it. It passes through the x-axis, so x, and then whatever that x value it crosses, which was 3. So your first equation is the equation for this line here, this altitude, which runs through the triangle, which is x equals 3. Now the second one, which runs through b, mixed in this out so you can see it, this is a little harder to find, but not too difficult. We're going to have to take a couple steps to find it. First, we can use these two points, because this is the line it intersects, and it intersects it at 90 degrees here, which is extremely important. Now, if we find the slope of line segment AC of the triangle, we can use it to find the slope of this line going through here. Because we know a perpendicular line has the inverse and opposite slope of the line that passes through. And I'll get into that in a minute. So we're going to use the slope formula. So we'll go back to the slope formula, which is rise over run. That's how I always remember it. Now rise so you can come up with the equation on yourself, is the y's. So you can write y2 minus y1, and x is the changes in x, which is the run. So x2 minus x1. So there is your equation for slope. Now what I do is I always just put these little, I, I label these. You can label them any way you want, it doesn't matter. But I'll put the x1, y1 next one to point C here, and I'll label this one x2, y2. It doesn't matter as long as you keep it equal. So now all you have to do is just plug in the values for what you have in your equation. So y2 will be 5, then y1 will be 0, then your x's, your x2 will be 3, and your x, <clears throat> and your x1 will be 6. Now I'll leave you with 5, negative 3, and there's your slope. For this line, now here's where that opposite an inverse of a slope is. So the slope of the perpendicular line segment, which goes through B, 
is the inverse. So all you have to do is you just flip this over, so 3 fifths, and the opposite, when I say that, I mean you change the sign, so you make it positive. If this was positive, you'd make this one negative. So the slope of AC is this negative 5 thirds, and it makes sense because the slope goes downward. And this line, our new one that we're looking for, is 3 fifths. It's got to be positive, and you see it's not as steep as this one's extremely steep. You know, the, the drop is 5 per 3 wide. This one's a lot less steep, you know, it goes up 3 for the 5, and that gives you your 90 degree angle. So why is this all important? I'll get rid of this slope formula right now. Now that we have the slope, we can use the point-intercept form of a line. So we're going to use y minus y1 equals m. This is the same m here, x minus x1. So this is the point-slope form of a line. We're going to use this to find this actual equation. Once we have that, we'll be able to solve our equations and find that orthocenter. So now, we have the slope. We're going to plug this back into m. And we have, we can see the slope, or the line that we're trying to find, crosses through this point, 0, 0, which makes it pretty easy because zeros are very nice to work with. So we're going to label this one, what, x1 and y1. So we'll just plug them in for what you got y minus 0 for the y1. The slope, we'll just pull from what we just found. This is the perpendicular slope to our original line segment. Then we have x minus 0, which is our x1 over here. So we'll reduce this. So this is y with our slope, 3 fifths. Now, if this was an actual value, you'd have to distribute the slope into it. So 3 fifths times x just leaves you 3 fifths x, and then any time, anything times 0 is just 0. So this is your final, this is your equation 2 that you needed. So I'm going to get rid of this now. So now that you have the two equations, you can solve for the orthocenter. So we've now found the equation for this line, the vertical line, and we've now just found the equation for this other altitude that we were looking for. Well, this x and this x is the same thing. So all we have to do is we can plug this x in to this equation 2 and solve for y. So let's do that. I'll rewrite this up here, 3 fifths, and then x, we'll just put in for 3. We'll multiply those two together, which is 9 over 5, and that'll be your y. And x, we already solved for. Other uh, problems where the altitude isn't a vertical or horizontal line, you might have a little bit more work to do here. But for this particular case, we're all done. So our ortho center that we were looking for before, just put this up here so we can label it so you can see what we're doing. Here's our x value. We'll plug that in for the x. And our y value is what we just found here. So our final answer is 3 9 fifths. And that's exactly where those two points meet. And that's how you use altitudes and ortho, and ortho centers in a geometric